I'm Steve for This Week With Cars and today I'm back with the Opel Ascana. If you missed my previous video on this car, take a look up here and you can watch that first. In 1975, Road and Track tested all of the cars that could be used in SECA's showroom stock class. Opel's previous model to the Ascana was so good that it ended up being banned. When Road and Track tested all of the cars, the Opel wasn't the best at anything but it was unanimously voted as the best car and the car that they would take if they were racing showroom stock. There's very few of these Opals still around. Most of them rusted away and ended up in junkyards. This one shows just under 11,000 miles on the odometer. That's probably 111,000 miles. So today I'd like to put it on the dyno and let's see how it's fared over these years. Could you still put the cage back in this car and take it showroom stock racing? or has the engine degraded to a point where you need to rebuild it before you take it to the track. Let's hook it up to the dyno and find out. I think I'm ready to dyno. I have my computer set up right here so I can monitor the dyno and my dyno control pendant. Start the car up. Put it into first gear, get it rolling. Now we need to get up into fourth gear, which is direct drive. We have the least losses through our transmission and the most accurate information from the dyno. There's fourth gear. Shows 1500 RPM. We'll check the computer. 1470, 1480. So that's uh, pretty much spot on. Now when I'm ready to make my run, I'll floor it and hit the start recording button. Then when I'm done, I'll hit the recording button again, which will stop the logging. And we can go check the data. So now I'm going to floor it and I'll start the logging at about 1500 RPM. See the screen now, we're all logging.
I'll slow the car down using the dyno. You would not want to use the car's brakes because that drum would severely overpower the brakes and you would just end up burning them up. Now let's check out the data. From the Road and Track article, they published that the Opal 1900 had maximum horsepower of 75 horsepower at 4,800 RPM, and that is net horsepower. This means at the engine, not at the wheels. And this is after 1971, so this should be using the way that we measure horsepower today, but it might not be. So if we get within 10%, of what this number should be at the wheels, I'll be really happy. So if we take in drivetrain losses, uh, we should be at about 65 horsepower gross at 4,800 RPM, according to this chart. Now let's take a look at how we did. We ended up with almost 51 horsepower at 4,600 RPM. So we're only 200 RPM off and about 15 horsepower off from what they advertise, but again, we're not sure exactly how they were measuring that. That number could have been a lot closer to 50 if they were measuring it at the wheels. The top line is showing our torque. We had max torque of 75 foot-pounds at 2,000 RPM. And the bottom line is our horsepower. So again, we had 51 horsepower at about 4,600 RPM. So our maximum horsepower was right here. I don't think this looks too bad. That's definitely not bad for a car that's almost 50 years old now and has over 100,000 miles on its engine. If you can find it, the Road and Track article from 1974 is an interesting read. The Opal wasn't the best at anything, but the sum of its performance made it the best car there. In 1974, Road and Track concluded that the Opal was a great car, especially for showroom stock racing. And according to my test, this Opal is still a great car today. I've hardly done any work to this car in the time that I've owned it, so if I were to give it a little tune-up, I'm sure we would get a lot closer to the advertised number. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.